How lovely to see you today. How are you doing? Very well. Thanks. Good to be here. So, I've, yeah. I actually was looking forward to this chat because you know how the Chinese always say we live in interesting times? And in that culture, I guess it's supposed to be a curse. But for us, we do live in interesting times because there's so much change with brands, with consumers, with social media and all the things that are happening yeah. around us. How do you make sense of it all, given the amount of time you've spent in the world of brands and helping marketers just get their minds around what they need to do? I think in a strange way, SA has always been a microcosm of the world. And you'll hear, have some of the global multinationals will tell you that, that South Africa was often used as a test market because we have such an enormous diversity and we've had to deal with this kind of diversity. And high levels of uncertainty. As a nation, we're very well equipped to deal with diversity. And I think as marketing people and as advertising people, we actually have a disproportionate reservoir if we were to tap into it and if we were to recognize what it is. Um, I'm very often saddened by the fact that we more veer into the negative than the positive of it. Because the capability that we have, I think, is unique in the world. This is 20 years of our democracy, right? Yeah. And we've seen a lot of change. We've seen change in the political sphere. We've, we've seen change in the economic sphere. But others may argue that we haven't really seen substantive change in how marketers try and engage consumers who are black in, without necessarily creating one homogeneous unit of this lump of people who look like me. Mm. What, in your view, is is affecting their ability or inability to engage credibly? I mean, like, this country has a, a black majority population. Surely it can be difficult trying to understand what people like, prefer, and how they choose. I think marketers in general second guess consumers. I think we talk quite easily and globally, not only here, about the fact that consumers are at the center of our business. So I think there is a contradiction inherently that we get our business from customers and consumers that we don't spend an enormous amount of time talking about those people that give us our business. So consumer centricity, I think, is a universal problem. I don't think it's unique to South Africa. What bothers me about South Africa is we, do, we really do second guess. And we come up with enormous numbers of prototypes, segmentation, exercises. Ultimately, communication works, I believe, for three reasons. You've got to be relevant to me. In other words, address my needs. Whether they're emotional, whether they're rational, whether they're a combination of that, doesn't matter. You've got to speak a language I can understand. And thirdly, but most importantly, it will not resonate until you create a certain degree of empathy with me. And empathy is a function of very deep understanding. So unless you are able to understand and hone in on consumers and what drives them, the fears they have, the concerns they may have, you will not be able to find an idiom that is able to express it sufficiently. Now, some of those idioms may be universal idioms, mm -hmm. but in as much as some of us can't laugh when we hear an Irish joke because we don't understand it, and some you may argue Americans don't often get English yes. humor, in exactly the same way, unless you deeply understand where somebody comes from as a consumer, you cannot find an idiom to express it properly. And you, you raise a valid point because there's a, there's I think there's a disproportionate amount of time spent in reviewing the output, which is a creative work, rather than unearthing the insight, which Absolutely. is what, what is the key driver. Absolutely. So if you are sitting in a room filled with marketers and they were saying to you, OK, I hear, I hear you say we second guess. I hear you say my work lacks relevance, my work lacks empathy. What would you have me do first? If you look at the connection between the message the creative idea and the brand, and you could not separate the three, that is a good piece of communication. In other words, if a creative idea can only express that given brand relevantly to that brand, and it can express the message relevantly to that brand, and those three are so interconnected that you can't divorce them, that is what makes for good communication. I think the only way you do that is with deep exploratory research and understanding and observation. I remember when I started working for Colgate Palmolive, we were expected every month to go out and do consumer probing and we had to write a report about it. Now we may find that laughable today, but the reality is we were forced to engage with people. We were forced to look at what they do, how they approach the buying decision. 
The problem with if you don't yourself experience it, we often speak about Steve Jobs saying he didn't do research. I believe he was a very keen observer of people. Akia Morita in, at Sony in the previous century, which is probably the Steve Jobs of, of the last century, because he developed so many new products like the CD player and the Walkman and all that, um, was a very keen observer of people. A lot of his observations ultimately was combined with the technological capability of Sony and it turned into amazing iconic products like the Sony Walkman, like the CD player, like mm -hmm. the DVD player. I look at the Oreo commercial, which I just love. That's in South no, Africa. It's okay. running here. Yeah. Um, now, that's a global brand, but what I really, really love about it, it, it does exactly what the TNS research says. It connects the brand and the message in a manner that's totally relevant to the brand, but shows very deep insight in the rapporté between a kid and, his, and her dad. And in that whole process, it's an incredibly engaging commercial. It's a very warm, a very emotional commercial. The other one is the Bells commercial with the reader. I mean, it is astounding. I was very surprised, to be honest, that it was for Bells. That's all I, I was a bit surprised because I somehow thought it was a bank or something else. But it is a profoundly good commercial because, again, it shows maybe the universal truth about a parent wanting to share in their kid's future and where the kids are going. The beauty of the examples you've just mentioned is they place this thing we call the human truth at the center of it all, right? Because, yes, it, because, because if it is a human truth, then it resonates. Yes. It resonates across territory, across class, across gender, and you don't have these problems of um, stereotypical work that shows a consumer who's black either running and eating at the same time yeah. or dancing for a cup of tea because those are the oh, examples yes. because those are the yeah. examples that are yeah. problematic right yeah. and and some yeah. somehow those low common denominators are what lazy marketers lazy being a respectful term in this case choose because then they don't have to do the work but I'm hearing you say that if you don't invest in doing the work then your brand won't get to that place where it can resonate be accessible and emote in a manner that that has some level of of relevance your rand and my rand is the same it is what I do with the rand that matters mm -hmm. if I'm a marketer and I spend a hundred million rand a year on marketing and another marketer spends a hundred million the creative impact that's, that's produced through serious insight and empathy is exponential. So my hundred million can become a billion if I do it well. I'm sure Bells doesn't spend a huge amount of money on advertising. However, the impact of that commercial is enormous. In impact terms, what it creates is two by two equals seven. There's always going to be a bunch of marketers who are sheep-like, right? So there's safety in numbers, so I'm not going to be the first one to stick my neck out. Let's see what everybody else does, then yeah. I will follow. Yet there is so much exponential value you can extract by making that audacious jump, Absolutely. right? So Absolutely. So Cecil is a perfect example. Yeah. It's the, I haven't been here before, nobody has been here before, none of my peers have been here before, but that's no reason for me not to go there, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So what, what then are the other additional audacious jumps that you think marketers and their ad agencies can do? I really believe, I had, uh, when I was still working on Toyota for many years, one of the clients at Toyota who became a good friend of mine um, over the years, called, uh, Claude Gerard always did a disproportionate amount of homework about the brand. So when the brief came through, yes. there was a real discernible difference. So it's almost like the, the wonderful um, TBWA commercial years ago with the mouse on the steering wheel, yes. selling uh, uh, you know, power, power steering. steering. Because they believed that if you can get the real, call it, truth about the brand, what sets this brand apart from any other brand? Um, that becomes incredibly powerful. So a lot of homework went into that. So with the result that you ended up from an agency point of view with something that you can sell, there was a message you can communicate. Unlike most bank clients I've ever had in my life that sit across the table and say, we're all the same, you must tell me what to do. Now that's a cop out, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, do your homework. The second thing is a big problem for me is media. Generally, we fall into patterns where we do the same thing over and over and over again. 
and I think clients have also gotten used to the fact that those are the media we use. We don't look at media from a psychographic point of view nearly enough. And there are many guys in media that's agreed with me about this issue in the past. We don't do enough qualitative research on media in terms of the real qualitative triggers. So what you end up with is a numeric-based system, which means that the big will always be big, and the small will always suffer. And whenever there is an economic decline, the small will fall off the schedule. And the problem is that basically, I think, in a world where social media and content management is the big buzzword, you know, with big data, content management is the other big buzzword mm -hmm. in the world. Where content management has become profound, I think the key is that you, you can only content manage well if you really use the right media, editorial mix within the right kind of environment to communicate. I think what we've done, we've aggregated the world because we voice over commercials. We still do, yeah. all the time. We don't stop doing that. And it's not only true about South Africa, it's true about Hong Kong, it's true about Shanghai, it's true about Brazil. We speak a language that most people sort of understand. That fundamentally for me undermines the role of marketing. The role of marketing is to connect me, to connect with you. Yeah. And to connect in a manner that you remember it. And to connect in a manner that you get up and think, I'm going to buy that brand. The sentiment of, of our discussion has covered growth points, opportunity points, and things that can be fixed, and things that we can build upon, right? So um, as a marketer, I'm sitting in, in, in my boardroom, and my, my boss has said to me, I need you to deliver 15% volume growth on this brand in another year, right? You and I sit here as people who are independent, and we go, perhaps that's what's problematic here, that you measure brand growth through sales and you've turned that into quarters, whereas brand equity takes a lot longer than a quarter to show some traction, right? Marketing has, is a balance between two factors. It's a balance between analytics and creativity. But it's not 2% analytics and 98% creativity, or 98% analytics and 2% creativity. It is a 50-50 equation. What we're doing is we're not adhering to that principle. In other words, what I'm doing, is it working, is it not working? Am I targeting the right markets? Is my value prop appropriate? I can only know those things if I really understand the market. I can only know those things if I know what media vehicles are being consumed and how they are being consumed, not just the numerical side of it. And the beauty of intuition is that it follows no logic because it res it's a visceral response, right? It is, this is what I see, Absolutely. therefore this is where we're headed. And what the world is telling us today, that's the response you should all listen to. There we go.